You asked me if I had any photographs that I could use for this video, and I said, I don't. Um, I said, you can create them in AI. And, you know, I did. Uh, there, you know, there are dozens of them. Statue of Liberty and so on and so forth, you can just create them. They take about three seconds to create. There's my Glasgow tram, I don't know if you can see that, you know. Um, that took about a second. You just type in with AI what you want to create. And you can create a kind of a fake history. Trust the tale, not the teller. Some of it's autobiographical, some of it's invented, as, inev as inevitably happens with poetry and with lyricism. You, you tend to sacrifice the truth to the song. It's partially honest. I mean, my grandfather did sail to New York with his, with his wife, but he didn't take his family anywhere. I've got a line where I said he took his family to New Bedford. My father came to England in 39 as a refugee, got out by the skin of his teeth. He was in, he saw, he saw Hitler come into Austria and, and occupy. And um, he managed to get on the kinder transport as a steward, not as a child. He was older than the kids. By a series of small miracles, basically, he wound up in England. A gentleman shook his hand and gave him a five pound note, which is probably the equivalent today of giving somebody 200 pounds, you know. Refugees don't get the same uh, kind of treatment that they used to, and they deserve to be treated with respect and humanity. And it's, uh, that's certainly lacking in, in our current setup. Um, whether that played into my decision to, to record it live, I don't know. I wasn't planning to do anything with it much, I just recorded it live as a performance piece for my patrons. When I finished the recording, the temptation to add George was just too strong to resist, because, you know, George's cello was so lovely and it, it, it so needed something else just to give it an extra colour. I started working in a studio in December 1984, making the tea. Um, in, in North London, and I think one of my fairly early sessions was making the tea for David. Um, he came in, you know, to work on one of his solo tracks. Um, so I was the I was the assistant engineer, uh, and then about um, 15 years after that, probably, um, my ex-wife was the chef at Ridge Farm Studios, and he was making I think it's the Wishbones album there in about the year 2000, and he was working with the in-house engineer. Uh, but he just wanted a sort of second opinion on the mixing side of things a little bit. So um, I got drafted in as kind of mixing consultant. Well, so I had a, a lovely week sitting in the jacuzzi at, at Ridge Farm Studios with the phone beside me so that David could say, well, I think we've got this mix pretty close. Do you want to come and have a listen? So I'd towel down and run across to the studio. Back in the 60s, everyone went in the same room, all played at the same time. And even if the guitars were a little bit out of tune with each other, it kind of didn't matter, it kind of somehow worked because everyone was doing it at the same time. Now we've got the advantage with all the digital and computer technology of that you can put things in time <laughs> in tune and fiddle about with them a bit more. Um, so yeah, you do have to work a bit harder to make things gel together properly. Um, but you know, that's the benefit of somebody with my experience of mixing and with David's experience of putting bits of music together. You know, you make it work, you, you do it until you're happy with it. The more I do, the more I can, I can do, the more I want to do. I've usually got, on this little phone of mine, a hundred ideas I've scribbled down that I haven't yet had time to realise. Um, it's, it's, and as the older I get, the less time there is now to, to get things finished. So I feel like I'm running against the clock to get it done while I'm still here now. The things that David sends me are pretty fully formed, you know, there's, uh, I know he does a certain amount of fiddling about, obviously, to try and squeeze my cello parts in afterwards. Uh, as and where he can, um, but to come up with you know an idea and to form it and have that kind of story and make it all make sense, um, they're so sort of wholesome, aren't they? You know, they're just sort of beautifully crafted pieces of work. I feel a bit driven, and I, but I've always felt like going to a studio is a bit like for me going to church. It's always been this magical place, and it's always been a very special feeling to to make music. And I've never, I've never had to work. I never, it's never felt like work to me. The fact that I've made a living from it is a small miracle, really, on top of everything else.
Don't let them sell your dream show Tearing at your heart How is the work them golden boulevard Back east to taste so sweet like paradise Angels walking Main Street Window shopping in the New York heat Where the taxis weave and pirouette And the buildings stand so tall Built by men before you or I were ever born When my grand Papa sailed to New York And he took his family to New Bedford, south of Boston Our pa went northbound, Oxford up to Scotland With three small children Watch the Clyde where the men built ships Built with pride Same as their fathers did before them Same as their fathers did before them And you might just hear a fog on On a misty night Same as their fathers did before them Same as their fathers did before them Papa bought us sold a hillman Make six hundred pounds to us Now I walk on Chinese rugs That cost a thousand bucks Once more I'm standing at the window I still see that Scotston tram My fist so tiny in my father's hand When my grandpapa said Took his family to New Bedford, south of Boston My pa headed northbound up to Scotland Three small children watch the cloud Where the men built ships, built with pride Same as their fathers did before them same as their fathers did before them And on that misty night Just out of sight That foghorn blew